Hi, so today's video is a little bit more unscripted, but it's still something that is very important and that needed to be said. And I actually got today's idea by uh, a conversation I had with my twin flame yesterday. And it started off as something completely irrelevant. It was all about past lives and um, like how somebody can channel what they were in their past life and past lives, yeah, and <laughs> other people and, you know, uh, that they met back then and how those connections evolve over time and, um, you know, keeping your vibration from lifetime to lifetime and all those things. So um, it started from this and today I got a really cool sign um, from God to speak about this. So, um, and it is about commitment to a specific spiritual path. And that is something very important and something um, I noticed there is an upset in consciousness about. And um, like I can, oh, it was also, part of this was also in the Twin Flame Ascension School class that I was yesterday, actually. So that's interesting. So, um, yeah, so like it's very important to choose your spiritual path and to follow it afterwards with all your heart. And um, it's actually very safe to stick to one spiritual path, whatever that is. So, for example, uh, I myself um, have chosen the path of um, Harmonious Twin Flame Union, which is, you know, Twin Flames as an ascension path to God, right? So that's my chosen ascension path. That's something that fully aligns with my interest and something that I really love, right? So it's something I'm very passionate about. So for you, it might be something else, but since this is a twin flame channel, I assume that our interests align here and you have chosen this path or a similar spiritual path to this. So that's my main spiritual practice, right? Doing the mirror exercise. And um, the spiritual teachers I've chosen for myself are Jeff and Shalia because they teach harmonies twin flame union. Nobody else teaches that, right? A lot of people can teach union or claim they do, but um, it's about seeing the results here. So for me, this is my chosen uh, spiritual path. And what that means for me is that I'm choosing to dedicate myself to it. It means that um, I take the necessary steps to you know, connect with God in this way and um, claim my union because that's what I have chosen. If I was, you know, if I were not interested in having my union, then, you know, another path would be more suitable to me, maybe becoming a nun. And a lot of you actually have such past lives, I'm sure, because if you're attracted to spirituality in this lifetime, maybe you've had at least one past life where you were a monk or a nun. So that's the case for me. I And I was talking to my twin flame about this specific past life where I was a nun. And yeah, back then I had a different spiritual path and I dedicated myself to that spiritual path fully. And this is what led me to this lifetime and... Um, choosing this spiritual path instead. So for me, uh, committing to my spiritual path in that life um, led me to even deeper levels of love, even deeper levels of connection with God. And yeah, that's not to say it was like a wrong path or something like that. It's all a matter of personal preference, whether you choose to, you know, choose Twin Flames as your ascension path or anything else, that's completely up to you. And it has to do with what aligns with your interests, right? So totally up to you. So for me, I tried another ascension path and um, it only took me up to a certain level. And in this lifetime, I manifested this. And I chose this because, you know, it aligns perfectly with um, what I desire in this lifetime. So yeah, in that case, um, it was what I needed to go through in order to, you know, find my current spiritual path. And um, What's very important to say here is that every spiritual path has its own um, has its own rewards, let's say, or its own goals. So, yeah, and this also has to do with religions. Like, if you follow a religion, um, you have a specific uh, version of afterlife or a specific goal for it. So, Christians, for example, like their thing is the afterlife. It's heaven. It's you know, it's being with God at the core for every single one of those. But yeah, it um, it has to do with what it looks like. So that looks a bit different for Christians than it looks like for any other religion, right? So yeah, if you desire the result that the spiritual path has, then it means that you must take the steps that this spiritual path has to offer you. So in our case here, uh, if you desire your twin flame union and you desire perfect union, 
uh, and you desire to take the twin flame path, you need to take the steps of the twin flame path, not of any other path. You can mix and match things, right? If they if that works for you, I know many people that um, they combine spiritual practices that are perfectly in alignment with their path to union. But yeah, like primarily, you need to focus on the twin flame path if that's something you have chosen for yourself. And it's also very um, important to recognize that, um, yeah, every path um, has a specific feature and that's to it, right? So, um, yeah, so it's safe to recognize that too, right? That every path has its own spiritual teacher. Like, um, yeah, it's safe to assume that um, if you want to like um, be a Muslim and follow this spiritual path, you wouldn't like um, go reading the Bible. You can do that, definitely, but um, you wouldn't, like, it wouldn't be your primary focus because it's different, right? So uh, the same is true here, right? Um, if you desire harmonious union, uh, you wouldn't go, like, anywhere else. Your primary focus would be to study the work that brings you harmonious union. And that's why it's so important, because when you commit to your spiritual path and you take the steps, uh, that's how you get the result. And you get the result by studying the teaching in depth and that... Um, in our case, that includes like um, doing the mirror exercise as as soon as you're upset. Every time you're upset, that's um, you know that's a spiritual practice, and it's um, studying the teaching. You know, what's in the classes, all those things. Those are very important because those are the foundation you're building for your spiritual path, and like you're studying them and you're going more in depth. And it's not different to, you know, studying any other um, religious text, maybe, if that's uh, what you desire. Or, you know, like maybe um, yoga is your chosen path, some type of yoga. Well, you would go to retreats then, you would connect with other people. It's the same thing, right? It's um, about following and studying your teaching in depth. And that's the only way you can get results out of it. Because if you don't commit to it, then, of course, you're not going to reap the spiritual rewards of it. And um, discipline is so very important when it comes to spirituality. That's something all the great masters have said, that you need to be disciplined here. You can't um, go half in and expect full results. You need to like go all in if you desire the entire result for it. And of course, yeah, there is work involved. And that's true for any spiritual practice. So just because Twin Flame seems more, um, is more grounded, it's more like... Um, I don't want to say normal in the sense, but that, um, yeah, you and your twin flame are a normal couple, right? <laughs> it's not like, um, yeah, you're not separate from your brothers and sisters. And um, yeah, like just because it seems easier in a sense, because it's like, oh, I'm just with my twin flame, so we're just having a romantic relationship, we get married. Uh, it's still a spiritual path and it still um, deserves dedication, it still deserves devotion to it. And um, that's how you also have a better connection with God because um, God desires to connect with you and commit to you. But if you're not committing to God and connecting with God, then how do you expect to, you know, have this relationship? And um, yeah, like also connecting to God from a place of wanting something from him is not going to be very rewarding because why would God want that, <laughs> right? It's not like, um, you know, God respects himself too much for that. So it's important to um, devote yourself and connect to God from a place of like um, desiring to be with God and being authentic no matter what your spiritual practice is because, um, yeah, there will be tough times no matter what path you choose, right? It's um, a fact of ascension. Stuff comes up and you need to work through them, no matter what your path is. None of them is easier than the other. It's about what um, what you can commit to. And that's very important because, yeah, there will be tough times. So you need to make sure you've picked something that you can commit to and that um, you're passionate about. So that way, no matter what comes up, you'll be able to work through those things and like um, come out of the tunnel, <laughs> you know? you're going to have your uh, tower moment and then you're going to be able to like rise out of it much easier because you know that's your path and you have built this trust in God and yourself that um, you'll be able to move through no matter what it is and achieve the result that you desire through this path. So 
yeah, you can think of it as um, like having a huge garden, right? You can't expect to have like this beautiful garden full of trees and flowers if you don't tend to them. You need to be there. You need to be present with them. You need to... This is something also that came up uh, recently. My twin flame loves his garden, so... And like he puts in the effort in being present with the trees here and taking care of their needs and watering them and all those things, right? Like cutting any branches, all those things that are very important to have a healthy garden. You need to be there. You can't, um, you know, leave the house there and go on vacation for six months, <laughs> return, and then the garden is perfect. Unless you hired someone, but yeah, I'm talking about like, you can't leave it and just expect everything to be blossoming. There needs to be work done and that's, um, that's your spiritual path, it's a garden. You need to cultivate it, you need to be present with yourself and your consciousness and you need to be like constantly working through things and purifying it. And um, I don't mean that um, in the sense that you need to constantly like um, do, every, do the mirror exercise every second of every day, but uh, that also involves uh, giving yourself the space to upheave and relax. Right? If you've healed something very deep, go take a nap. That's part of the healing. And yeah, that's if God is calling you to go take a nap, that's part of constantly healing and being in the flow because that's what's needed for you. Or yeah, if God is calling you to go play video games, that's part of the journey. That's part of your spiritual path. So, you know, following that fully, committing 100%, and that's what's going to get you the results. So yeah, that's all I wanted to express today in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Bye-bye.